All right, I just want to start by going over how we can get a Raspberry Pi set up. First thing you're going to want to do is to basically get a SD card reader. So whether it's SD or hopefully you'll get one with a micro SD slot. Also, it's worth the money if you have USB 3 to go and get USB 3 uh, devices as well because it's just going to read it that much faster. So I'm just going to plug this thing in and put it into my laptop here and we'll get started. Okay, so now that we've plugged in our uh, media source or our SD card, uh, what we're going to do is now format the card. So what you're gonna do is download SD card formatter. You can find uh, a link to the download uh, in the uh, comments and description below. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is find, I mean, there could be a number of different ones here to choose from. Uh, what you're gonna wanna look for is the one that's around 16 gigs or whatever your card is essentially. So in this case, uh, we're going to go to the, the boot disk that is a SDHC uh, card, and we're just going to name this one Stretch, because that's the new name of it. And we'll just do a quick format. Uh, now that I've uh, completed this, what I am going to do is I'm going to open up Etcher. There's other systems you can use but I use this because it works on both Mac and on Windows and it works equally as well on both and it looks the same on both. So there's uh, less confusion. So in this instance, we're just gonna select the image and you'll see that I left it on my uh, desktop to make it easier to find. Usually try and keep that clean, but for this video, we'll, we'll do it this way. Now open that up and it's automatically selected what it thinks is the right one, but you can change this to whichever one you feel uh, works best. Or, or, the, or the right drive you're looking for. And then I'm just gonna hit flash. Uh, I'm gonna hit yes. And then we're just gonna wait for this process to complete. Uh, it's basically gonna go through along here and then you're gonna see a validation process. Uh, this is the first time using uh, the USB 3. So hopefully it's a lot quicker than what I've been using. So we'll see that it's almost done validating here. And once we've got that, we're good to go. Wait for the unmounting. So now we have a successful, uh, and if there's more that you wanna do, uh, you can just flash another, uh, and then it'll bring you right back in, uh, which I will be doing next. Uh, so for right now, essentially what I'm going to do is I am going to take out this flash drive and then show you the next step of booting up for the first time. All right, so now we're going to uh, take our uh, adapter out. We're going to take out the uh, SD card and we're going to mount it or put it, install it into the Raspberry Pi. So you'll see in this case here, uh, it's basically going to go slide right in there. Uh, I can take this one apart here and show you a little bit easier how this works. But if I dismantle this, you'll see that it's just going right in there in that slot right there. So essentially what we're going to do, so I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way, and I'm gonna put this in right here, slide that one in, and unlike the first one, there's gonna be no click, it just slides in and it stays there. Uh, there are some issues with springs they had in the past, uh, so I, I like this solution a lot better. Uh, okay, so the next thing now is just to sort of uh, boot it up. So I'm going to just spin over here to the screen so you can see what happens once we plug this guy in. So essentially what I'm doing at this point is plugging in my power source. You'll see some lights come on. And then the screen should boot up. Right now you'll see in the top left hand corner, you'll see the uh, four raspberries, which basically means this is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B and we have a quad core for our processor. And this is our little welcome message. Uh, on the top left, you'll be getting some information just from Linux in terms of copyright, uh, the Linux system. Uh, you'll see uh, that it does an automatic login with the new stretch. Uh, just like uh, Pixel did as well. 
but uh, for those that are uninitiated, uh, I believe the username is pi and the password's raspberry. It's the other way around. I can never remember. Okay, so this looks quite similar to what we've seen in the past. Um, we'll just go up into the top right hand corner here and just see some of the things there. So let's start out by opening up this guy here. Uh, we've got a nice shutdown uh, function here. Uh, we still have all our office commands. Uh, still got Minecraft Pi. Uh, we have a calculator now. Uh, we have uh, Debian reference, a link to that. Um, let's see if there's anything else that's new. Oh, we have an automatic link to uh, the Magpie, which is pretty sweet. But we won't be able to do anything with that just yet, because we need to get our Wi-Fi going. Along the top here, uh, you'll see our, our sound, our, our CPU usage, our processor usage. Uh, I'm going to uh, activate my Wi-Fi just by clicking on this little guy here. Uh, and then uh, log into my home network. So let's just take this off screen to put the password in. And you'll see you got the password correct once the uh, little symbol has been activated up there. Uh, this is important uh, if you want to actually remote in uh, to our setup here. So I'll be walking through that one next. But all in all, it seems uh, relatively standard. Uh, everything seems uh, to be uh, pretty well similar to Stretch. But let's just go double check what some of the uh, the new features are. So for those that are unaware, um, just to cap this off, um, this is Stretch, the new OS. Uh, if you go to the Raspberry Pi homepage, you'll see it's one of the latest blog posts. Uh, it's been two years since they last released uh, an OS upgrade. Uh, basically, there's new things with Bluetooth audio, better handling of other usernames. There's a Scratch to Sense Hat extension, which I would love to try out. Um, that's That seems really interesting. Um, there's just a few other things that you can do. Uh, but the last thing that I will instruct you to do is to go in once you've connected to Wi-Fi and uh, open terminal and uh, do your sudo apt-get updates. Uh, so these instructions are great here um, uh, for you to basically uh, get started. But that's basically the last stage, which I didn't show on the screen there because it's hard to get. But you can literally just uh, copy this verbatim. It does take a few minutes, but uh, it's something that you need to do uh, as soon as you log in. So that's basically it. That's uh, getting set up in a nutshell.